Hello students, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyale, Sagar. Today I am going to present a lecture of BSc third semester on the unit Criminalistics, which has been prepared jointly by Professor Devashish Bose and Giriraj Sharma, PhD scholar, UGC GRF, at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyale, Sagar. Let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Module 1 Introduction and Definition of Scene of Crime Module 2 Classification of Scene of Crime Part 1 Module 3 Classification of Scene of Crime Part 2 Module 4 Location and Protection of Scene of Crime Module 5 Role of Scene of Crime in Criminal Investigation Module 6 Conclusion Dear students, today we will have a very interesting lecture on scene of crime. As we know that scene of crime is an utterly important place for investigating officer to start with for solving a crime, to book the culprit, to save the innocent, provide timely justice to the victim and to provide more and more information to other investigating officers. So, my dear student, this is the fact that you cannot solve a crime without having a good knowledge of scene of crime, procedure and documentation. Moreover, investigating officer should have knowledge of science and technology which plays an important role in the investigation and adjudication of crimes in our criminal justice system. Today by watching television or just by reading newspaper, we can conclude that day by day pattern of committing crime is changing. Scene of crime is a place where all the physical evidences are found which could be defined as something legally submitted to a competent authority as a mean of asserting the truth of any questioned matter under investigation. Police investigators deals with evidence on a daily basis. They identify the physical evidence, collect, preserve and use the physical evidence in criminal investigation which determines to a large degree of their success as well as the outcome of the case. Dear students, as you know that classification of scene of crime is also important for the investigation of crime because if we do not classify the scene of crime, it will confuse the investigating officer. That from where we should start and end the investigation. Classification of scene of crime will help the investigating officer in many ways, such as to fix the investigation premises, help in the recognition of evidences, collection, packaging and transfer of evidence to forensic science laboratory. So, there are many ways to classify a scene of crime. For the sake of convenience, we shall study it in two parts. So let's start one by one. Scene of crime classification based on original location of the crime. A. Primary scene of crime. This is the main place of crime where all the activity has been performed by the perpetrator of crime. For a clear understanding, it can be explained by the help of a figure. Now we will be explaining the figure. Primary scene of crime, perpetrator, victim. So dear students, it is the activity figure which explains while subject comes under the contact of the things and this figure also depicts the relation between the primary scene of crime perpetrator and victim. B. Secondary scene of crime. This is not a main scene of crime where the crime had originally taken place. At this scene of crime, subject transfers and conceals physical evidences from place of original crime scene to the present scene of crime, that is from one place to another place. For example, A commits crime at X spot, then A by using vehicle 
transported the physical evidence to spot Y. It will lead to two crime scenes which will be identical and associated with the investigation. X spot will be considered as a primary scene of crime and Y spot will be considered as a secondary scene of crime. C. Indoor scene of crime. When any crime is committed in a closed premises such as cottage, home or room of house, washroom, playground, covered playground obviously, any covered gallery etc. So all of these scene of crime could be termed as indoor scene of crime. D. Outdoor scene of crime. When any crime is committed in an open premises or any place which do not have boundary such as road, forest, sand, hill etc. All these scene of crime are considered as outdoor scene of crime. E. Mobile scene of crime. When a crime is committed on such a place which is mobile in nature, such scene of crime could be categorized as mobile scene of crime. For example, train, car, bus or any moving object etc. Scene of crime classification based on size. A. Macroscopic scene of crime. This type of classification would include not just a location but all the things which were involved in the committing crime such as the victim's body, the suspect's body, the house or the vehicle involved etc. B. Microscopic scene of crime. This microscopic definition of a crime scene is any specific object or place of physical evidence related to the crime being investigated. For example, fingerprints found on the body of the victim or any of the objects. In case of hanging, ligature marks, trace evidences or cigarette butt are considered to be microscopic crime scene and should be individually investigated at a crime scene. 2. Scene of crime classification based on type of crime. Crime scene can also be divided according to the type of crime, which is of following type. A. Homicidal crime scene. B. Assault crime scene. C. Robbery crime scene. D. Suicidal crime scene. E. Accidental crime scene. F. Burglary crime scene. G. Arson crime scene. 3. Scene of crime classification based on scene condition. It can again be classified as A. Organized scene of crime. This is a special type of category of scene of crime in which perpetrator watches each and every activity of subject before committing the crime. Basically, criminal is a professional shooter who makes a plan and always do not try to leave any type of clue against himself or herself. So, investigating officer should investigate with a keen observation and patience. B. Disorganized scene of crime. Those type of scene of crime which occurs without intention. 4. Scene of crime classification on criminal activity. Again, it is subdivided as A. Active scene of crime. Those places of crime where crime takes place regularly or those crime places where probability of criminal happening is more. B. Passive scene of crime. Are such crime places where probability or chance of crime taking place is less or negligible. My dear student, after knowing about scene of crime and its classification, now we shall study about the location and protection of scene of crime. For the sake of convenience, we again split it into two parts. Number one, location of the scene of crime. In a general way, the location of scene of crime can be determined on the basis of following point. A. Corpus delicti. Essential element of crime is called corpus delicti, which provides crime has been occurred. Corpus delicti evidences are found at a scene of crime. For example, broken window glass, 
broken lock of the door, ransacked room, disturbed cash drawer, or metal shavings outside safes would be examples of a corpus delicti evidence that would be important in establishing a burglary. Dear students, likewise, glass pieces and paint chips in the middle of the highway would indicate probable vehicle hit and run accident has occurred. B. Information obtained from eyewitnesses. Sometimes investigating officer get the information from eyewitnesses that crime had occurred at so and so places. In this case, cross checking of information is very necessary. C. Information from relevant physical evidences. Physical evidences also explains themselves that crime has taken place. Most of the physical evidence are found at primary scene of crime. For example, in a case of murder, blood stain is common evidence obtained at the primary scene of crime. D. Discovery of human remains. Most homicides are brought to the attention of the police soon after they occur owing to the disturbance caused. The confession of the culprit or the body being discovered in a public place. Sometimes an attempt is made at concealment but this is seldom very effective because human bodies, especially those of adults, are heavy and difficult to carry. There are many methods to search human remains as well as dead body such as physical search. This is a good method for searching human remains at a scene of crime. The method involves the use of manpower, attention and methodological approach. Often the scene is divided into grids and sections of the grid is searched at a time. Dear student, this method has its own drawback such as it requires a lot of manpower and it's time consuming and therefore expensive. Cadaver dogs. Dogs show a very developed olfactory power, extremely well developed sense of smell and the police can employ specially trained cadaver dogs to help them locate dead bodies. American workers reported that cadaver dogs work best at a temperature of 4 to 16 degree Celsius when the earth and atmosphere are moist and there is a wind speed of at least 8 km per hour. Dogs can detect bodies that have been dead for many years and those that have buried or sunk underwater. Aerial Photography Aerial photograph is a good method to find human remains in concealed area. It will reveal disturbed soil and localize change in plant growth pattern whilst infrared camera will detect the heat given off by a dead body as it starts to decay. Satellite images. It provides the overall image related to human remains and wider area of the scene of crime. This is a non-destructive method. Data banks of the area may be available which highlight local changes. Magnetometry. It is the technique which detects objects such as metal buckles, firearms or metal keys etc. This method cannot use directly to determine dead bodies until dead body has metallic things around itself. Ground penetrating radar. This is non-destructive method again which uses the electromagnetic radiation of the microwave region to image the subsurface and detect the reflected signals from the surface structures. This allows the operative to build up a three-dimensional map of the underlying soil including the position and shape of objects and the presence of voids. This would show up if the body was in a coffin or box. So my dear students, after listening to this episode, now we shall study certain things related to scene of crime. For example, under normal circumstances, it is not tough to determine the location of the scene of crime. But sometimes criminal conceals the scene of crime and try to mislead the investigating officer from actual scene of crime. Sometimes due to natural factor, for example, take a case of homicide crime scene, which is located near a river or a forest. So 
the dead body present at the scene of crime as well as circumstantial evidences may be disturbed or mutilated by aquatic animals like fish, crocodile, tortoise, alligators, etc. Or wild animals and may even be taken from one place to another place by wild animals, misleading the investigator. Thus, the primary scene of crime could be changed by these animals. Therefore, in these circumstances, an investigating officer must keep caution while determining the location of scene of crime. Apart from all, there are many crimes such as kidnapping, rape, murder and forgery etc. In these conditions, investigating officer can get more than two or three crime scene. Let it more clear be explained with the help of another fantastic example. In a case of rape, criminal may abduct the victim from her home, school, college or maybe at a marketplace. And the crime could have been taken place at another locality, away from the place of kidnapping. So, the investigating officer can have two scenes of crime. That's why, for the investigating officer, both places will have the equal importance in terms of investigation. Dear student, Scene of crime is the mother of investigation. Scene of crime plays a significant role in the criminal investigation because it has all the physical evidences which links a scene of crime to a victim or a suspect who might have committed the crime. This is the scene of crime which is a testimony to each and every activity that happened at that place. It depends on the investigator to read the scene of crime. If he is unable to read the scene of crime, then the investigator will lose the case. My dear students, scene of crime are self-explanatory about the cause. Now, you will be thinking that how it is possible. So, scene of crime explain what might have happened at that place. Scene of crime narrates each and everything happened there. Scientifically, for example, if we get two scenes of crime related to burglary case, and both have been committed in the similar pattern, but according to law of individualization, they will be different. So, it is the ability of the investigating officer to find out the differences between the two scene of crime. Otherwise, the investigating officer may conclude that both the scene of crime are same, but in reality, they are different. Apart from all, the investigating officer should not contaminate or disturb the scene of crime and should not allow the exit and entry of public to the scene of crime. Preservation of scene of crime is also important because it helps in the investigation. The quality of investigation depends on skill, management, education and experience of the investigating officer. As a matter of fact, the main heroes of the scene of crime are physical evidence which plays utmost important role in the determination of crime. Preservation, collection, handling, transportation and forwarding of physical evidence are also significant because by their examination we can prove who had committed the crime. Dear student, here I would like to explain the forensic examination procedure. Physical evidence recognition, identification, physical properties, physical properties, biological properties, chemical properties, comparison, standards, unknowns, controls, individualization, reconstruction, crime scene investigation, information. So, let's start with this flowchart headline and subheadlines one by one. 1. Recognition of physical evidence. Recognition means whether the physical evidence is relevant to the particular crime or not. For example, in case of robbery, investigating officer should collect broken lock and tool marks present on the almira or the door and should not collect irrelevant physical evidences which can have low value at the court of law. 2. Identification 
Next step is identification of physical evidence. For the sake of convenience, we could divide them into physical, biological and chemical evidences based on their property. It will help in the examination and analysis of physical evidence. Moreover, this will also help in the determination of particular instrument for analysis and examination. 3. Comparison Whether the two are similar or different. 4. Individualization It shows the unique characteristics of the physical evidence. Individualization for example, if investigating officers obtains fingerprints at the scene of crime, then it could be of that person who might have been to the scene of crime for one reason or the other. By close examination that fingerprint and applying the theory of elimination, we could conclude that it could be of the suspect or a victim. At this point, it is pertinent to mention that no two people have the same type of fingerprints. 5. Reconstruction Before submitting the report of analysis, we should reconstruct the crime scene and investigating information. Scene of crime reconstruction means to re reconstruct the crime by means of physical evidences obtained from that particular crime scene. Reconstructed scene of crime in many cases helps the investigating officer to opine and conclude the crime. Now dear students, we are going to conclude the lecture which we have discussed by means of present script. We have learned about the introduction and definition of scene of crime in which we have discussed what is a scene of crime, how it is important for investigation and what type of precautions investigating officers should take while handling the scene of crime. Moreover, we also studied classification of scene of crime and various methods which help to decide the location of the scene of crime. The most important thing which we have accounted here is the forensic examination procedure of the scene of crime. With all these information here, we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Devashish Bose signing off. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes allors at www.cc.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.